What's up, guys? This is episode two of Whitey Talks. It's a series where I just talk to you about my opinions on different worldly things. Last episode was about religion. If you want to check that out, link in the description. This week's episode is going to be about race and culture. So I don't know as much about race and culture as I do religion, so this one's probably not going to end up being quite as long. But still interesting topics I can talk about. And I think a lot of what I said in the religion video ties in to race and culture. Mainly culture, I'd say, but at the same time, like they're definitely their own subjects and deserve their own talk. So, in a lot of nations, race isn't really a thing. And what I mean by that is they're outliers other than their own nation in the low percentage. Whereas in America or England, somewhere more populated, race plays more of a role. And in the recent years, we've noticed that it's not so much about race, it's about the culture. Like, there are a lot of people from a lot of races willing to denounce their race, whether it be because they live somewhere where it's just not many people are proud to be Czechoslovakian, not many people are proud to be white here, and people do that, and that's fine, whatever, if that's your personal decision that you don't want to, you know, make your specific culture or races, uh, national dish or whatever, you know, nobody's going to hate on you, but there is another side of that, there's the side of not including others. Like, there's a lot of religions and cultures that they would rather not let their daughter talk to a guy of another race or culture. And that's scientifically damaging. Let me get into that. So, we are all given specific genes, and that's it. That's all we got to work with. We're not making more, we're not... You know, I, I guess you can be incredibly rich and you're buying gene therapy and shit, but I don't know enough about that to talk about it, so I'm not going to. If you have your set of genes and your wife has her set of genes that are very similar, let's say y'all are both blue-eyed, brown hair people, it's not like your baby is going to be a shitty baby or something. That's just not true. It's not like they're going to be any less of a baby than, let's say, a mixed baby. But what I found interesting when I learned it is the more genes that you're mixing, like the better chance that that child has at receiving special combined genes and traits that... I don't want to use the E word, but I, I guess they're more similar to evolution. Like, if you have brown eyes and your lady has green eyes and your child comes out with, you know, a vibrant combination of the two, that's not a bad thing. So, I guess back into the cultural part of that. Like, I used to feed the homeless in this park in the city. And there were churches from all over the state that would come to do this. There would be mosques and temples and churches from all over that we were all really polite to each other. But there was this one group from India. They wouldn't even tell us what religion they were practicing, which I don't see how you're supporting your God if you're not even spreading his word or letting other people know that his word exists. But I don't know, maybe their God has different rules, but these people from India, um, it was an older guy and his wife, and they're like seven beautiful daughters. So I completely understand, what. which I shouldn't say that, a couple of them were probably like 16, so like five beautiful daughters and a couple of young ladies. So I can understand why he was the way he was, just because it was kind of like, oh, you're just trying to talk to my daughters, but... It wasn't like that. It's like, bro, we need somebody to scoop the eggs. Like, nobody... 
nobody's scooping the eggs right now. But anyways, that yeah, that was a time that culture kind of got in the way of what I was trying to do. But all right, anyways, let, let's get back to race. So race, the big thing in America is the black and white dispute, which is I mean, a lot of people say like, "Oh, that's so fucking stupid." Like I never owned a slave. Nobody ever know owned a slave. So how can they be mad at me? But to that same logic, they can uh, outscience you. That like somebody that is offended by it can outscience you. They can say, "All right, how different are you from your ancestor a hundred years ago?" Like, from somebody from the 16th century and the 17th century. How bodily different and mentally different are they? It's a good argument. It's like, yeah, you probably haven't changed that much. You're probably very similar to your ancestor. And people don't really like to hear that, but it's just kind of the way it is. Either way, it's like, oh, why are you going to blame me? I didn't directly do that thing. So, they can get logical on your ass if it offends them that you think you got nothing to do with that. And I'm not saying like black people, because usually it's like a white social justice warrior that's getting mad at you about this kind of thing. But like they were put through slavery. The And a lot of white people were slaves too. A lot of Hispanic were slaves too. But the black race was massively put through slavery in America and it was hard labor and hard conditions while the majority of white people were we're talking about majorities here remember that the majority of white people were not out in a cotton field like hard body hard labor all fucking day so when they are in this argument about is slavery still a subject of racism they can think back to their ancestors were hard working, forced labor, like badass sons of bitches. That's just all there is to it. And we were cushy up in the house, sit on your fucking ass, soft body. So it's a hard time period to remember. And you can be like, oh, my ancestor wasn't that. He fought in the Civil War. He did this. And nobody fucking cares anymore. Like, that's all old news. Just like. On the other end of it, we don't want to hear some guy saying like, oh, my granddaddy picked like fucking four truckloads of cotton a day. Like that's a painful memory. Nobody wants to remember that. Let's move on. I think I got hella sidetracked there. So anyways, a lot of people are like, why is your name Whitey? Is that a racist thing? It's quite the opposite. Like I worked in places and you know my friends in school like so everywhere I've worked or went to school was pretty much well I can't say everywhere I went to school was predominantly black because I went to New Kent that was not predominantly black but my friends were predominantly black outside of school like not to say like I got my n-word card or nothing like it, it ain't like that it's we just had a different subculture than you might have in your state. So me personally, like, I've said nigga a thousand times, but would never throw an ER on it because that's so fucking offensive. But at the same time, there are other people who are like, what the fuck? That white dude just said the M word on the fucking internet. And that's completely understandable to me. I completely fucking feel that, and I'm sorry if saying it with an A offends you. I wouldn't say it in front of your mama or to your face. You're right. But let's say we became really good friends and we were playing video games for weeks and we started calling each other it. it, it there's an interesting bond there, I'll say. Like, in the workplace, I became really good friends with, like, two people at two different jobs. and We worked together for years and... We would use terms that if other people heard it, it would seriously offend them. Like him to me and me to him. But 
it didn't matter to us. Like that was our lingo. And it was even a way that we bonded to be like, it doesn't offend me when this cat says it. Cause he's a really good friend of mine. And I know he wouldn't do anything to hurt me in that way. And it was a way to break down walls to his friends too. Cause he would be sitting in a group of his coworkers cause he had worked there before me. And I would pull up a chair and be like four black dudes. You know, I kind of stood out. I'm whitey. So, Everybody just kind of stopped what they're talking about, and he would be like, man, fucking chill, he's black. And it was funny, because I'm obviously not black, but it was his way of like letting all them know, like, you don't have to stop your conversation because he's white. Y'all are being silly, let's get back to what we were talking about. And, I don't know, I got a lot of respect for that kind of interaction. Somebody mature enough to put that behind them. Because there is history there. It is offensive. So. When you think about like what interactions are important. In your day. You know. You, you can be that Indian guy I met. That is all about protecting his family. He doesn't want his family to talk to anybody else. You can be like. The old fussy white guy that's just fucking racist and hates everybody. But I don't really see a point. Like, you can have a lot more fun in workplaces interacting with more people. And if you're just a racist piece of shit, so if you interact with other people, you just know it's going to be a problem. Yeah, I guess like work from home, build cabinets or something. Just shut the fuck up. You know, nobody's really worried about what you got to say if that's just you. Like, I, hi, my name's Tom. I'm racist. Can't walk outside of my house. That sucks, man. But for anybody else, I would say, like, make friends of all shapes and colors at your workplace and online playing games. Like, uh, a lot of people talk about the toxic environment that video games has, and it's a lot of because of what I'm talking about, like, culture and race. Like, some people are so proud of their culture or race that... It makes them say or do disgusting things against other cultures or races. And that's sad. Like, I hope that's something that, as humans, we'll grow out of eventually. Like, being too boastful and obsessed with old ways, old cultures, is what's causing people in Middle Eastern countries to throw battery acid on their wives' faces when they do something really minor so just remember that when you're telling a racist joke that's like really off canter cuz you know if you if you say it with your buddies whatever but if your buddy is a total dumbass like he's just dense like you're you're funny you can tell 20 jokes a day you're just your johnny laughs a lot that racist joke isn't going to matter to you at all but you're telling it to a total dipshit who it's going to be like his favorite joke for the next year just don't just don't and like i was saying culturally race wise there there's a ton i don't understand like i'm not going to pretend to be a master on this just like not going to pretend to be a master on religion or anything it's just topics that fascinate me. If I'm full of shit, let me know in those comments. Thanks for watching, guys.